Welcome back, everybody, to the Cleveland Guardians franchise here on MLB The Show 22. We will be resuming the ALCS today here against the Toronto Blue Jays. In the last episode, we covered games one and two, and we ended up splitting those. The first one, we won six to four. Both offenses started off red hot. The score was three to five through the middle of the second, and then there was virtually no offense after that. The lack of offense carried into Game 2 as we ended up losing that one 3-2. The pitching staffs for both teams have been really good. The starters, the bullpen, both teams have not been able to hit the ball and both teams are pitching at a very high level. And it is certainly a little bit of a surprise because in the ALDS against the Detroit Tigers, it was the complete opposite. Our offense was balling. They scored 14 runs in an elimination game in order for us to win, whereas the pitching was not great. We had a team ERA of about six through the five games against the Tigers, including allowing 13 runs in an elimination game. So it's been an odd flip-flop of the offense doing well and the pitching doing bad to now the pitching doing good and the offense doing bad. So we'll see what can happen here in games three and four, which will be in today's episode in Toronto. The Blue Jays get an opportunity to play back at home here in Canada. And we'll see if the Cleveland Guardians can look to get back on top here in this series as they look to get back to the World Series for a second straight season. Of course, the winner of this series will play against either the Miami Marlins or the Los Angeles Dodgers in the World Series. And we'll be following along what happens in that series as well, of course, with this one. Here's a look at both lineups. Elliot Ramos starting today for Cleveland. He's only gotten three at bat so far this year in the playoffs, but the Guardians want to give him some run. It'll be against Toronto's ace, Alec Manoa, who did not perform in the ALDS against Houston. Two starts, 9.31 ERA in a little under 10 innings. Not very good. He'll start with Dansby Swanson, who chases on the outside fastball for the first out of the inning. That'll bring up the following batter, Cattell Marte, who historically has owned the Toronto Blue Jays in this series. He just always seems to do really well against them. But he goes down looking there on the fastball for the second out of the inning. That'll bring up the MVP candidate, Jose Ramirez. The count is 2-2, two and two, pitch on its way. That pitch looks like it's a strike, but the umpire calls it a ball. Interesting. That pitch was definitely in the zone. So Jose Ramirez gets a lucky break, and now the count is full. Of an opportunity here to get on base. He'll look at this one as well, and they call a strike three, even though it was well outside of the zone. Is this umpire blind? My lord. So Alec Manoa strikes out the side, and we'll go to the bottom of the first as we get a look at Cleveland's ace, Shane Bieber, who statistically has been even worse than Alec Manoa. A 12.46 ERA in eight and two-thirds postseason innings. He pitched terribly in Game 5 of the ALDS against the Tigers, and is lucky his offense produced. Bieber's day will not start off a whole lot better here as he allows an early base hit from Deegan Beckendam in the left. He hit that one a little too hard for it to be an extra base hit. Two away for Bichette. He swings and misses on the slider. Good inning from Shane Bieber. He allows for one hit, but other than that, no damage done as neither team scores here in the first inning. Both of these offenses obviously have not been good so far in the playoffs, so I think it'll be a matter of which unit can really get a mojo first. Bell strikes out into the bottom of the second now. Teoscar Hernandez will strike out. Alec Manoa and Shane Bieber have both been bad throughout the playoffs, and now they both look like the aces that these teams have grown accustomed to them being. David Green pops it in the left. Valera after it, and it's going to drop. George Valera misplays it, so that'll end up as a double for Green. He is now in scoring position, and we'll see if Toronto can strike first here in the bottom of the second with Green on second. 1-2 for Alejandro Kirk and two away. Pops it up to third. Jose Ramirez doesn't even have to move as he's going to end up with it. I don't know why Green slid to third, but okay. Nonetheless, no score through two. The Guardians haven't even gotten a base runner up to this point as we hop into the third inning now. Elliot Ramos up with one away. Grounds this one over to short. Going to be a tough play for Bichette. Backhanded throw is in time. He got him. Great play by Bo Bichette to gun down Elliot Ramos. That'll bring up the catcher, Luis Campusano, who belts it into left for a base hit. So finally, Cleveland gets a base runner. It's Luis Campusano, of all people, and he is now aboard with two away. 
That'll bring up Dansby Swanson, the 2-1 pitch. This one grounded down the line and fair. That one's going to be a base hit. Swanson's going to go for second, and he is safe. A ballsy base running decision by Dansby Swanson, and it pays off, putting two runners in scoring position and a major opportunity for the owner of the Blue Jays organization, Cattell Marte. He'll draw a walk, and the bases are now loaded for Jose Ramirez, the American League MVP, who grounds it to second. Green flips it to first, so the Guardians finally get some base runners. They actually load the bases, but they're unable to drive anybody in. With how poor the offense has been throughout this series, Cleveland had to capitalize there, and they are unsuccessful. Bottom three, what a catch by Swanson. Robbing Deacon beckoned him with a base hit. As the white man's got some bunnies. Cleveland's defense in this postseason series has been oddly really good. Into the fourth, Kyle Lewis strikes out on the inside sinker. The offensive struggle continues from all parties involved. Full count now for Jesus Sanchez, who has struggled more than anybody at the plate throughout the postseason after he was so good last year in the playoffs as he grounds out to end the inning. Four scoreless for Alec Manoa. He is cooking. Shane Bieber trying to keep it going, too. Bo Bichette lines it into center for a single, so he is aboard with one away. We'll see if this can be the inning where the Blue Jays really get some things rolling. Shane Bieber's pitch count is still pretty low. I believe it's quite a bit lower than Alec Manoa's at this point, as that'll bring up Teoscar Hernandez, who strikes out on the slider. That pitch well out of the zone, and Bieber completely fooled him. His third strike out of the game. Now against David Green, he'll draw a walk. So Toronto has runners on first and second for Kevin Biggio, who has performed pretty well for the Blue Jays' offense, and he goes down looking on the low fastball. So the Blue Jays leave two base runners of their own. Again, with how bad the offense has been, you cannot afford to leave base runners, as this game is still scoreless going into the fifth. Elliot Ramos looking for his first postseason base hit of the year on a 1-2 pitch, and he's going to get it. Singles and into center. So Cleveland is a runner aboard here with one away. We'll see if this is the inning where they finally can, you know, do some damage. That'll bring up Luis Camposano. Got a base hit in his last at bat. The full count pitch. And that one is belted into right for a single. Camposano now two for two on the day. I'm pretty sure he just matched his total through the first seven playoff games in hits with two. So now there's two runners aboard and one away for the top of the order. Dansby Swanson. Count is full for him, and he will draw a walk. That's a tough pitch to lay off. Inside fastball, pretty close to the strike zone. So now the bases are loaded. Again, you cannot afford to leave runners on base. It's Cattell Marte. This guy owns the Blue Jays with an opportunity to strike. Marte with a missile into right field, into the second deck. It goes as it is gone. A grand slam for Cattell Marte, his fourth home run in the playoffs. Speaking of four, that's how many runs Cleveland has just put on the board with one swing of the bat. Marte is crowded by his teammates at home as the Guardians have possibly flipped the trajectory of this entire playoff series again with just one swing of the bat. That wasn't just a home run. That was a moonshot by Marte into the second deck. Multiple rows up in the second deck. So Alec Manoa is taken out of the game immediately, and he'll be replaced by Eric Pardinho, who's allowed one run in two and two-thirds postseason innings thus far. He'll face off against Jose Ramirez after the grand slam, and Ramirez takes a big cut at a changeup right down the middle. He wanted to send that one into the second deck as well, and unfortunately does not get as lucky. 2-2 now for Kyle Lewis. He's going to hit this one nicely into right. That'll drop possibly for extra bases as it bounces over the foul wall for a ground rule double. So he is now in scoring position for Josh Bell, who skies this one, towering high into right center, but it will be caught to end the inning. Still a very good frame, though, for Cleveland as they get four off the grand slam by Cattell Marte. The Guardians are now in clear control. They've just got to hang on to the ship as Alejandro Kirk Lines it in the left. That's a good start to the inning as he is aboard on first for a single. So the Blue Jays have a runner on. We'll see if they can finally get on the board here in this inning as well. That'll bring up the former guardian, Manuel Margot, who will go down on the low slider for the first out of the inning. Bieber's fifth K of the day. That'll bring up Deegan Beckendam now. The one, two, and two away. Pops it up. Luis Camposano will make the play as he barely hangs onto it. 
Five scoreless innings for Shane Bieber. The pitch count is starting to get high a little bit, but I think the Guardians are hoping to get one, maybe two more innings out of their ace. Let's go into the sixth. Two away here for Elliot Ramos. 2-2, two -two, hits it nicely into center. And Ramos is now two for three on the day with a pair of singles, taking advantage of his opportunity to start today out in right field. That'll bring up Josh Naylor, who is up as a pinch hitter for Luis Campusano. I know Campusano's two for two today, but the Guardians feel more confident with Josh Naylor up, the Canada native, and he will weakly ground out. So the Guardians are unable to score anybody there, and it'll remain 4 nothing As we go to the bottom of the sixth, there's a nice start for Toronto. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. hits it into the bullpen as it almost killed one of their relievers, and it's now 4-1. to one. Guerrero with his first home run of the playoffs. And the Toronto Blue Jays are finally on the board. And it nearly came at the expense of relief pitcher Tim Maeza. As we look at that one again, he wasn't even looking. And it nearly hit him. As we look at this one again, bang, it nearly ricochets off of his nuts. So he is awfully lucky that that ball did not hit him there because that would not have been fun for him. So Shane Bieber will be taken out of the game. Five innings, one earned run. Really good performance from Shane Beaver. Much better than his last outing against Detroit. He'll be replaced by Camilo Duvall. A 3.18 ERA and 5.2 thirds postseason innings. He has pitched in all but one of Cleveland's postseason games so far. As he starts with Bo Bichette. He'll swing and miss on the slider. Good pitch by Duvall for the first out of the inning. That'll bring up Teoscar Hernandez. He goes down on the fastball well in the dirt. But with how hard Camilo Duvall throws, it's hard for these batters to make a quick judgment as Green goes on the four-seam fastball. So Duvall strikes out all three batters with all three of his different pitches. And we will move to the seventh. 4-1 your score. Dansby Swanson will open up the inning here for Cleveland as he belts this one up the middle. And that one will be caught, but it will be not in time. A really good play at second by Beckendom. But Dansby Swanson is safe at first. So Swanson is aboard here to start the inning. That'll bring up Cattell Marte, who hit a grand slam in his last at bat. Full count pitch. And he's going to ground this one right to second for a double play. Not quite as good as his last at bat, I won't lie. Good work by the Blue Jays infield on the 4-6-3 double play to turn two. And that'll bring up Jose Ramirez to the plate. Count is 3-1. Two outs, nobody on, 4-1 your score. Pitch from Paradinho, and that's going to be a walk. So Jose Ramirez is back on base. We'll see if Cleveland can add some more runs. They do have a comfortable lead, but they certainly don't want to put the pedal off the metal as Kyle Lewis rips it into left center field. That probably could have scored a run if not for the double play, but nonetheless, Jose Ramirez will move up to third. So there's now runners on the corners. A huge opportunity here for Josh Bell. The 2-2 watches a high curveball go right through for strike three. If he timed that pitch well, he could have really capitalized, but unfortunately is unsuccessful as we move into the bottom of the seventh. Bruce Dark Gratterall is in for the Guardians. He has pitched in six postseason innings, allowing three runs up to this point as he faces off against Alejandro Kirk. This one is in high and deep. If it's fair, it's gone. Bang! You're off the foul pole for a home run. And Toronto cuts into the lead even more. A solo home run by the big fella, Alejandro Kirk. And it's now 4-2. to The Blue Jays offense hitting for good power here down the stretch as they look to possibly make a comeback down the stretch here in Game 3. Toronto's still got some work to do, but their offense is looking good right now. Victor Reyes with two away, grounds at second. Marte fields it cleanly, and that'll end the seventh. But again, not a bad inning for Toronto as they add another run off the homer by Kirk. Tim Maeza now in for Toronto after nearly getting his nutsack ripped off by the Vladimir Guerrero Jr. home run back in the sixth. He'll face off against Elliot Ramos here with two away. Ramos two for three today, hitting well against lefties, but he grounds out to first. So a one-two training for Maeza. Toronto can certainly come back. They're only down by two, but with Cleveland's back end of the bullpen coming in, the Guardians have to feel pretty comfortable. James Karinczak has not allowed a run so far here in the playoffs in five innings up to this point, and that's going to change with 120 of the bat. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. has done it again. Back-to-back -back at bats for Vladdy with home runs, and just like that, it's only a one-run game. 4-3, now your score, and this one has gotten real interesting real quick. So Guerrero now has two today, as that will bring up Bo Bichette. 
Hits this one well into right. Ramos cannot make the play, and that'll end up as a double. Toronto's offense really making some plays right now, and at this point, it's anybody's game. The Guardians cannot afford to choke this one. Teoscar Hernandez goes down on the knuckle curve. That's a huge strikeout for James Karinczak. He needed that one for the second out of the inning. Full count for Green. He'll draw a walk. So Toronto is runners on first and second for Kevin Biggio. Hits this one high and deep in the left field, and that one goes off the top of the wall. Nearly a home run. Instead, it'll end up as an RBI double. Two runners in scoring position, and the game is tied at four. James Karinczak has gotten absolutely rocked in this inning, so he's going to be taken out of the game and replaced by the closer, Emmanuel Classe, who's going to come in a little bit earlier than expected. He also has not a lot of runs so far in the playoffs. Alejandro Kirk hits this one into right. It will be caught by Ramos. Not a great inning vote for Cleveland. They allow two runs. Toronto ties it. Going into the ninth, this one is knotted up at four. Can the Guardians be able to take this one back, or is Toronto going to steal one away from Cleveland? Eliezer Alfonso is up. He will draw a walk, so he starts feeding on base. Good start for Cleveland. That'll bring up Dansby Swanson. Lines this one into center. That one could go for extra bases. Alfonso on his horse, rounding third, headed home. There is no throw from the cutoff, man. It's an RBI double for Dansby Swanson. And the Cleveland Guardians are right back ahead. It's now 5-4 with their first runs since the fifth inning. One away now for Jose Ramirez. He'll draw another walk. Ramirez is on base percentage throughout the postseason is over 500. He's drawn so many walks. Two runners on base. 3-1 for Lewis. Grounds it up the middle. Baruchi makes a great play, and he will turn two. Not a bad inning, though, for the Guardians. They do drive in a run off the double by Swanson, and now they just need a smooth inning from Emmanuel Classe, the best closer in baseball, to finish off the game. Not a great start. His former teammate, Manny Margot, will single into right. So the tying run is on base, and the go-ahead run is at the plate. That'll bring up Victor Reyes, who's going to come in for a bunt. So Margot successfully advances to second. Reyes is barely out at first. And now with one out, Toronto is a runner in scoring position and is likely a base hit away from tying. Deegan Beckendum gets the base hit. This one should have no problem tying the game as Beckendum rounds first, heads to second. The throw from Marte is not in time. Runner scores. That's Margot, and it's now 5-5 with the winning run in scoring position for Vladimir Guerrero Jr., who strikes out on the cutter. So now Toronto needs a base hit to keep this game out of extras. It's Bo Bichette, full count. Flies it into right, going to be a tough play for Ramos, and he drops the ball! Elliot Ramos has it deflect off his glove, and that's the ball game. Toronto's going to walk it off 6-5 to five in very unlikely fashion. I think that would be one way to put it. Cleveland had this game won. They hit the grand slam by Marte. They were up 4-0. Going into the bottom of the sixth inning, and these are not the types of games that you can afford to lose. Games where you are winning for most of the time, you have control, the other team steals it away, and that's how you lose playoff series. Is So having this game stolen from us by the Toronto Blue Jays is a major momentum killer if we want to get back into this series because we are now down 2-1. to one. The way this game ended really hurt. I mean, as we look at that play again, it is a tough one for Ramos but it literally deflected off of the sign of his glove. I mean, how does that happen when the game is on the line? Here's an even close-up view. Yeah, it deflects off the side of his glove. So, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I just don't know. The offense was not good, although I will give the offense props for making plays down the stretch in the ninth inning with the double by Swanson and the great grand slam by Ketel Marte. But the offense really was not consistent today. The pitching, on the other hand, well, Shane Bieber was great, and then the bullpen, who usually performs very well, was horrible. Camilo Duvall was great. He struck out the side, but Gratterall allowed a run. Karen Cech allowed two, and then even Emmanuel Classe allowed two as well. Very uncharacteristic of those guys in the back end of the bullpen to completely blow a game like this. So that'll bring us to game four, and we have to win this one. If we lose, we'll be down three to one. I know teams in playoff series is with Cleveland have, you know, come back from three to one before, whether it's the 2016 World Series where Cleveland famously choked a 3-1 lead, 
were the NBA Finals that same year where LeBron James led the Cleveland Cavaliers on a 3-1 comeback. So Cleveland knows that they year two about 3-1, but ideally we can avoid that and try to make it 2-2 two two and just put it as a best of three with up to three games left to go. So quite frankly, the Guardians cannot afford to lose this game because they will be in a lot of trouble if they do. Let's take a look at these pitchers. Tyler Malley and Ranger Suarez getting the start. Here's a look at both lineups. Toronto preparing as they are facing off against the lefty today with Suarez. Here's Tyler Malley. His first postseason start wasn't bad. Six innings, three earned runs. Got the win over Houston. Trying to get another win here against the Guardians. Two outs here for Jose Ramirez. The 2-2 on its way. He checks his swing on the fastball. So a quick 1-2-3 inning from Malley. And that will bring us to the bottom of the first as we get a look at the Power Ranger. Ranger Suarez, who did not pitch well in his first postseason outings, allowing five runs in three and a third innings and a loss to Detroit. Hopefully the trade deadline acquisition from Philadelphia can perform a little bit better today as he starts with a strikeout against San Alberto Mondesi. That will bring us into the second. No score, no base runners for either team thus far. As Kyle Lewis grounds this one to second. What a nice play to extend for it and get the out. The first baseman showing some gratitude over to Catlin Biggio, who makes the play there at second base. Bottom two, Teoscar Hernandez goes down on the circle change. So both offenses, who have been pretty mediocre throughout this series, continue their struggles. As we go to the third, Ramon Romero has been performing very poorly as of recent, and he gets plunked. So the first base runner for either team gets on with a hit-by-pitch. That'll bring up Eliezer Alfonso. He goes down on the fastball. Malley's fourth strike out of the game. Back to the top of the order. It's Zane Rowley leading off today. And Rowley, ground to second. Biggio misplays it. And so we finally have a base hit. A single for Zane Rowley. So Ramiro is on second. Rowley is on first. A big opportunity for Cazel Marte, who had the huge grand slam in game three. And instead, he will pop out to third at Alberto Mondesi. Will make the play. Still no score here through the middle of the third. This game is trending very similarly as game three did. Garrett Cooper strikes out. Suarez with his third of the game. And Will Margot now with two away. Hits this one into right. Alvaro Pena cannot make the play. And Margot will end up at second with a stand-up double. So Toronto gets their first base run of the day here with two away. We'll see if the leadoff man at Alberto Mondesi can drive them in. And he does not as he watches the circle change blow right by him for strike three. No score through three. Tyler Malley and Ranger Suarez are both pitching very well today. Jose Ramirez will open up the fourth for Cleveland. He belts this one up the middle. This one goes into the left center gap. Four extra bases. It looks like Ramirez will hold up at second for a double. The Guardians have a great opportunity once again to score here first with a runner in scoring position. Kyle Lewis is now up. Skies this one high and pretty deep in a right field, and it will be caught. Jose Ramirez looking to tag up to third, and he will be safe, barely. So now Cleveland is a runner 90 feet away from home plate, and a sacrifice fly should score him here as it's Josh Bell up to the plate with one away. 2-2 two -two pitch, and he swings at a high fastball well above the strike zone. So now the Guardians are going to need a base hit in order to drive him in. And it's going to be Jesus Sanchez up for Cleveland. The 1-2, he swings and misses at a high fastball as well. So Jose Ramirez starts feeding on scoring position, and Cleveland does not drive him in. With how poor the offense has been, I know I sound like a broken record, but you got to take advantage of runners on base. Toronto's going to get one aboard here in the bottom half of the inning with a single into left, despite a good defensive effort by Cattell Marte. So Guerrero's on first here for Bo Bichette. He swings and misses at the circle change low and away in the dirt. Another strikeout for Ranger Suarez, his fifth. Teoscar Hernandez now lines it into center, caught by Jesus Sanchez. That'll end the inning. Just like game three, no score through four. Will once again the fifth inning be the inning where, you know, we get some offense. Two away here for Eliezer Alfonso. He grounds it to first. So, unlike last game, Cleveland, instead of scoring four in this inning, gets none. So, through the middle of the fifth, we still have no score. Can Toronto be the first ones to strike here in the bottom half of the inning as they try to get on the board? Garrett Cooper, the veteran first baseman, will single in the left with one away. Not a bad start to the inning for Toronto. So, they've got a guy on base now. 
That'll bring up Gabriel Moreno. Lines it past Gattel Marte, and that'll go for a base hit. So now there's two runners aboard and one away. That'll bring up the number nine hitter, Manny Margot, and he gets plunked. So now the bases are loaded. Toronto's got to score one or two in this inning. It'd be a major failure if they don't. Adalberto Mondesi draws a walk. Drives in a run. Base is still loaded. Ranger Suarez has lost all control right now. Victor Reyes flies out into center. Sanchez should be able to make the play. However, a run will score on the sacrifice fly, and it is now 2 to nothing. I said Toronto's got to drive in multiple runs in this inning, and they do. Still two outs, and Vladimir Guerrero Jr. up as he draws a walk, and the bases again are loaded. Ranger Suarez is pitching terribly in this inning after a great start, and he'll be taken out of the game. Cleveland does not trust him to get out of this inning. So his day is done. Four and two-thirds inning, two earned runs so far, and they'll be replaced by Camilo Duvall, looking to finish this inning off strong with Bo Bichette up at the plate, and the bases are loaded. 2-2 two -two pitch on its way, and Bichette swings and misses at a two-seam fastball. So Toronto leaves them loaded, but they do drive in two, and the Blue Jays hold a 2-0 lead here going into the sixth. Jose Ramirez lines this one into right, and that ball is gone! Jose Ramirez cuts the lead to one on a solo home run, his sixth of the postseason. Jose Ramirez continues to dominate here in the playoffs, but unfortunately the rest of the offense has fallen short today can get some momentum off of this home run. The offense has been blanked until then, and they'll stay blanked for the rest of the inning as Kyle Lewis goes down looking. But hey, not horrible. The Guardians get one. They're finally on the board. Camilo Duvall still in the game here with two away as Garrett Cooper singles into center. Duvall making quick work of this inning so far, but he's still got to get that last out as that'll bring up the number eight hitter. Gabriel Moreno pops it into left. Zane Rowley should make the play. So with three innings to go, the Toronto Blue Jays lead this game 2-1. to one. Both offenses haven't been great, although they're looking better. So we'll see if that trend can stay that way here going into the seventh. Tim Maeza in for Toronto. He's still a little bit traumatized after nearly having his balls ripped off in the last game. So we'll see what he can do here with two away against Alvaro Pena. The rookie grounds it down the first base line. Garrett Cooper fields it cleanly, gets the out. And so nothing doing there in the top of the seventh for the Guardians as they are still down 2-1. to one. That'll bring us in the bottom of the seventh. Dylan Tate checks into the game for Cleveland. He's been a little bit underwhelming in the playoffs, allowing four runs in five and two-thirds innings up to this point as he faces off against Manuel Margot, who clobbers this one into left field, and that baby's gone. A home run for the former Guardian, his first of the playoffs, 419 feet, and the Blue Jays double their lead as it's now 3-1. to one. That'll bring up Victor Reyes, lines it into right. That should go for a base hit, and it will. It'll end up as a double for Reyes, and Dylan Tate's having himself another pretty bad inning. He's already allowed one run and could be in danger of allowing another one. That'll bring up Guerrero. He's going to get this one into right center. That one will go for a hit. Victor Reyes scores, and it's now 4-1 to one off the single by Vladimir Guerrero Jr. So the Blue Jays now lead this one by three. As that will bring up the next batter, Bo Bichette, grounds into an inning-ending double play. So Cleveland gets through the rest of the inning, but they do allow two, and the Toronto Blue Jays are now sitting pretty with two innings to go. Seth Lugo checks in for the Blue Jays here in the eighth. He's allowed two runs and an inning and two-thirds so far in the playoffs. It'd be nice if he allowed two more, right? Dansby Swanson up as a pinch hitter to lead off the inning. Swanson hits this one high and deep in a right center field, and that one is... Gone! Dansby Swanson, whenever he comes off the bench, hits like Barry Bonds. It's so weird. I don't know why, but certainly not a bad thing. And Swanson cuts the lead down, making it 4-2. to two. The Guardians still have some groundwork to do, but I suppose this is a good start here to what would be a pretty big comeback. Swanson with his second home run of the postseason. His first one was a pretty big one as well. That'll bring up the catcher, Eliezer Alfonso now. The one-two pitch on its way. And Alfonso rips it in a right. That one will go for extra bases as the right fielder, Hernandez, cannot make the play. And Alfonso will end up at second with a double. So he's in scoring position. The tying run is at a plate with nobody out as that'll bring up Zane Rowley. The count is one and two. Pitch gets by the catcher. Alfonso looks to head to third. He is safe. 
But on the play, as Alfonso slid, he hurt his arm. That's not good. So he has to be taken out of the game, and he could be out for a little while. That's really bad because what the Guardians like to do with their catcher spot throughout the playoffs is they kind of like to platoon them. And whenever there's a big at bat, they put in a pinch hitter and then substitute the other catcher into the game. Now they can't do that. If Eliezer Alfonso is hurt, then Luis Campusano is the only catcher on the roster. And thus, he cannot be pinch hit out of big time situations when there's better hitters on the bench for the Guardians. Luis Rangifo will come in as a pinch runner, and presumably Luis Campusano will come in as a defensive substitution in the bottom half of the inning. Nonetheless, there is now a runner on third, so I guess that's the positive. Rowley grounds out to Lugo for the first stat of the inning. Rangifo wisely stays at third, no reason to do something stupid and try to head home. He might be a little bit more aggressive here with one out, and a full count here for Cattell Marte. Walk would set a force out at second, but Marte's going to ground out to first. Blue Jays make the play, but Rangifo scores, so it's now only a one-run game, making it 4-3. to three. Base is cleared, two away, and a pitching substitution for the Blue Jays as Lugo is taken out of the game, and he'll be replaced by Jordan Romano. He'll face off against Jose Ramirez, who homered in his last at-bat, the 1-2. Well, it certainly has the height to be the home run, but not quite the distance. It goes maybe about, I don't know, 20 feet total. And it is caught to end the inning. But the the Guardians score two. That inning could have gone a lot worse. But they need their pitching to clutch up. And they need another good offensive inning in the ninth. Nick Sandlin is into the game for Cleveland. Not Karinczak or Klasse after their disaster class in game three. Karinczak will face off against Garrett Cooper with two away. Cooper will single in to right. The following batter, Gabriel Moreno, would hit a triple driving in a run. The clip didn't save. I apologize. And then Manuel Margot will single into right, scoring Moreno. So the Guardians are right back down by three. Unfortunate. So now they need a big rally here in the ninth. But first, they got to get out of this inning, which they do. Alberto Mondesi will strike out. So the Guardians trail by three. Going into the ninth inning with Austin Adams in for the save. Cleveland has scored three runs all day, and they need three runs in this inning to keep the game alive. 2-2, two -two, runner on first. Two away for the rookie, Alvaro Pena, and he strikes out on the low slider. The Toronto Blue Jays are one win away from the World Series as they have defeated Cleveland 6-3 here in Game 4. Toronto wins both games today, and with that, the Blue Jays hold a 3-1 series lead. All the momentum belongs to the Toronto Blue Jays. They've won three games in a row. They're sitting pretty. If they win Game 5, then Cleveland's season is over. So the Guardians are going to have to win three games in a row if they want any chance at this championship. The offense, once again, completely sold. Three runs, five hits. We just didn't hit the ball well. There's really not much to say about it. The offense, after dominating at the end of the Tiger series, has lost all of their magic here in these four games against Toronto. Ranger Suarez, I thought, was pretty good. He struggled in the fifth. The bullpen wasn't bad. I don't think the pitching is to blame for the loss. We did allow four runs in the last two innings, so the bullpen certainly could have been a lot better. But I think it's more so the offense who deserves to be blamed, while the bullpen also certainly didn't help either. So we're in a rough spot. We're down 3-1 to one in the series. We've got to win three games in a row. And we got to do it with no momentum on our side and the offense forgetting how to hit a baseball. Luckily, the Eliezer Alfonso injury is better than expected. He only bruised his arm. He's probably not going to be able to play for one to six days, which is not good because we need to go 3-0 and within the next one to six days. And if we lose one of these three games, our season is over. Since next episode's an elimination game, that'll be the only game for next episode, game five. So if we win, we keep the season alive. And if we lose then the back-to-back -back dream is over. That'll wrap up the episode. Hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. Certainly not the result we hoped for, but hopefully we can get back to it in Game 5. Peace out.